Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. Hi Lo, my name is Loie and I sincerely hope tonight is not our first time meeting because your girl is a mess. <laughs> okay, I'm always a mess. Like 24 hours a day I'm a mess. That's my brand. I own it. But I just did my hair using the viewfinder as a mirror, so I'm hoping that's not ridiculous. <laughs> I've just been having a rough day, you guys. I realized today that I left my camera battery charger at the Roosevelt Hotel when Haley and I went to go film our videos there. It's been like a week since we went and did that. Not, not quite a week. It's been several days, almost a week and uh, it's long gone, nobody knows where it is, and I was just so frustrated, so I just spent like $80 ordering a new charger and a new battery, and so I am back on my old Sony A5100, so if I look a little bit weird, that's why, it's a different kind of lens, it's a different kind of camera, but hopefully I'll be back on my Canon really soon. A lot of you probably don't even care, and you're just like, Loie, we want to know what in the world this title is about, like, what are you talking about, you, your family stalker? I was on FaceTime with one of my best friends, Andrew, the other night, and we were just kind of swapping stories back and forth, as you do. A lot of the times we'll get into like talking YouTube and talking story times, and we both led really, really, really crazy lives, and we both have a lot of stories to tell. And so sometimes we'll tell each other them, like, is this YouTube worthy, or even is this like YouTube safe with their current, you know, standards and their like crazy ad policies and all of that. Andrew had told me this one story and it's so, so, so crazy you guys because when you hear this, you'll think it's a story that I've talked about before on my channel. It is so similar, it's eerie. It's about this really creepy, creepy late night visitor that came to one of his relative's house. And when I told him that story, I was like, number one, that's weird because I experienced something so similar to that. But number two, have you ever heard this story? And I rattled this story off, you know, to him really quickly, talking about my family's um, stalker that we had for a period of time, like this guy who would come to our house. And he was like, you don't have that on your channel. And I told him, yeah, I do. Hold on, I'll send you the video. And I realized I don't, I don't know how I've never told this story, but my family had a stalker. I've told you guys about my stalker that I had online, this guy who catfished me, and really and truly that isn't part of this in any capacity. My family has a stalker though, and he would come to our house in the middle of the night, and we lived in the middle of nowhere, you guys. In the middle of nowhere on a farm, and it got creepy so many times. So I'm going to tell you a few of those stories, and Unfortunately, this doesn't have the best resolution because he just sort of vanished. Maybe that is a good resolution though. Maybe it's good that nobody got hurt or he didn't try anything crazy because when I tell you this, you guys are going to be like, well, that's weird. I'm locking all my windows and doors forever. <laughs> After this video, make sure to go down to my best friend Andrew's channel and watch his video that he is uploading today since this video is a collab video, a long distance one. Sadly, I miss him so much. Um, he's going to be talking about the story where somebody came to his relative's house really late at night because I just think it's so creepy and it's kind of relevant to the story too. So anyways, I'm just going to get into it and the first time that I ever met this man. I never knew his name, but he was a really skinny, tall, white man who looked to be in his early 20s. He had like a scruffy kind of gingery blonde beard and blonde hair that was not super long but not really short. It was just kind of unkept, if that makes any sense. Like. Everything about him was very like messy. His uh, his t-shirts were always wrinkled when he came to us. Uh, his pants were always torn. Like, you know what I mean? He just seemed like not. And nobody looks homeless. Homeless isn't necessarily a look. You wouldn't know a lot of people who don't have a home are homeless. But he didn't look like he was in the best conditions, frankly, because he didn't really take care of himself. One night, my family and I had gone out to dinner, and where we lived was in the middle of nowhere. We had to drive at least 45 to 50 minutes to even like get to the nearest suitable sit-down restaurant. We had gone out to dinner, and we got back, I would say like 9 p.m., maybe like 8.45, 9 p.m., getting late into the night. And we had just gotten home, locked the door, everything, everyone's unwinding for the night, my mom's taking out her earrings, I'm getting changed, brushing my teeth, and somebody knocks on the door. And my dad goes to answer it since it's pretty late at night. Honestly, who knows at that hour? <laughs> but my dad, being the fearless human being that he was, 
uh, just opened the door and there was this guy. This guy says to my dad, hey, like I'm really down on my luck right now. I'm sorry to bother you. My car broke down and I'm trying to get a ride to work because my shift starts at like four in the morning or something like that. He said it was like three or four in the morning and he worked at this like greenhouse nursery plant nursery thing. I don't know English, <laughs> but that's kind of what he told my dad is like, could you give me a ride here? And my mom, I remember was so torn up about this and so terrified. My dad wasn't going to come back. She was like, you know, telling him like, don't do it. Like, don't give this guy a ride. Like, we don't know him. I feel really bad for him, but maybe we could give him money for a cab or call him a cab or something. My dad was a good judge of character, but I also feel like sometimes he was kind of blinded by his heart. I feel like he wanted so badly for people, not that he wanted them to be good, but he believed the best in everybody. And this guy was younger and like, looked like he could almost be one of my dad's students. You know, my dad taught high school and middle school band. So my dad actually told him, yeah, I'll give you a ride. And still to this day my mom was so mad my mom really thought my dad wasn't coming back this guy was gonna steal the car like was gonna do something my mom grew up in, like outside of detroit michigan my mom <laughs> knew what people could be like and so yeah my dad gave him a ride he asked the guy like can i pat you down and make sure you don't have a weapon this is for my own safety and i'm more than happy to give you the ride the guy was like yeah no worries and my dad like patted him down made sure he didn't have like a gun or a knife or something like that it was still very dangerous my dad gave him a ride to this nursery in the middle of nowhere and it wound up being like a 20 mile drive uh one direction one direction huh so yeah that was the first time we ever met him my dad dropped him off nobody was there at this greenhouse and the guy thanked him and my dad drove away and that was that they didn't talk in the car the guy didn't give him any like identifying information like it seemed not normal, but it seemed over after my dad dropped him off, you know? So fast forward, we are coming home from school one day and we lived kind of down the ways from our school that we would go to. My dad taught at the same school that I was attending. What's so funny is until my senior year, I was always in a school with one of my parents, whether it was my mom or my dad. They always worked at the same school I was attending until I was literally in my senior year of high school. And then when I went to college, they weren't teaching at the school, but I was never really alone. I never got into any trouble. As we're driving, we see through, we lived in the middle of nowhere, but there was kind of like a main street where there was a bank and a small like section of thrift shops and the vet's office and just like a few things less than a quarter of a mile long, just like, random things like a convenience store random stuff and we see this guy walking down the street and when he sees our car he waves at us as if to like hail us down my dad wasn't gonna stop because i was in the car and like if he had driven the guy if something had happened you know at the end of the day he made the choice to drive the guy to this plant nursery but like i was in the car and i was his like <sighs> 13 or 14 year old kid at this point. The guy literally is like waving at us, waving at us, waving at us, and traffic is really slow in this section. You have to slow down to like 20 miles per hour to go through this main street because there's so much stuff going on. So the guy literally jumps in front of our car and is waving at my dad, and my dad is kind of irritated at this point. The guy walks around to the like driver's side of the window. My dad rolls down the window, and the guy was like, hey man, like thanks so much for the ride the other day. Do you think I could cop one again? And my dad was kind of like, oh no, you know, my, my daughter's in the car, I'm taking her home, she has homework, this and that. And the guy was like, that's okay, we can drop her off on the way. And he looks over at me, and he's like, you're looking awfully pretty today, like, I didn't realize how pretty you were the other night. And my dad is really, really creeped out and like starts rolling up the window like doesn't even say anything i'm his baby girl and he was like nope <laughs> on all of that because this is definitely an adult man who's being really weird dad starts rolling up the window and he's like no you're gonna have to find another way i'm sorry and we drive away and he still is like standing in the middle of the road staring after us like cars are moving past him on either direction he's just staring after us weird and my dad comments on it and he's like that guy's so strange you know i i thought maybe like he was just genuinely down on his luck that night and I, I wanted to think so, but something seems a little bit off there. So one of the major reasons I stopped using this camera is because it has this weird tendency to record things and not save them to the SD card. So I'm going to kind of catch you guys up on what I said happened between this time that we saw him and the last and next time. 
something my dad found on this man when he initially patted him down were cigarettes. And none of us really smoked. I mean, it's a common thing to smoke. It's not like unheard of or anything. But he had found a pack of cigarettes on this guy. And we started finding cigarette butts all around our house um, shortly after meeting him and after all of this had kind of started. So we found them everywhere. Our landlords didn't smoke. Obviously, none of us smoked. It wasn't like anybody had a hidden addiction. We would just find cigarette butts everywhere. Sometimes we would hear a man outside talking, and when my dad would go to investigate, there would be no one there, but this was a reoccurring theme. There was also a car, and I believe it was like a white, small, little four-door sedan or something. It wasn't like anything terrifying looking, but we would always see one car parked across the street staring at us, and at night this car would turn on its high beams directly into our front door and just leave them on for tens of minutes nobody ever really went to confront them but the one time that my dad decided like enough was enough we'd been dealing with this for a while he literally picked up the phone dialed the police and before he said a word before like the phone even rang the guy immediately took off so it was just really strange timing and made us wonder if somebody was watching the house really closely. I genuinely thought I had the story on my channel, but now looking back, I think the hugest reason I never told it is because you can't say that any of that was him, but it all just happened in the same time frame. And my parents always just made these strange little remarks about like how they thought this guy was still watching the house and whatnot. But I think that's really why I never told it until now. So we go home and there is a spell of time shortly after this and I got to be honest with you This has been such a long time from now. I don't know how long it was in between my wrist just popped I'm getting old um, I don't know how long it was between the last time that we had seen him and he asked for another ride and was being like really weird in the middle of the road like whatever and The time that we saw him next and last and we didn't see him. I saw him so I was sick and home from school and there was a period of time where I was sick and home from school for like a long period of time because I had mono but I, I think that I was younger because I think that these weren't very spread out so I don't think this is when I was 16 so for some reason whatever I was home from school I won't have like an inner monologue debate with myself over this but I, I was and basically I heard a knock on the door I had been sleeping on and off all day I had like a really high fever and my parents were both teachers, so they were both at school, and my brother was at school as well. So I went, and our door didn't have a peephole, and I could just see somebody outside, and they had a kid with them. There was a short little boy with them. And I opened the door, and there he is, just standing there, the, the guy, like the family soccer guy. And he's just standing there staring back at me, holding this little boy's hand. And this little boy was like so 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 cute beautiful blonde hair big blue eyes like picture perfect beautiful child and um the guy says to me like we've never met before hello miss my car engine is overheating do you have a bottle of water that i could borrow and i'm just staring at him because like we've we've seen each other like twice before now this is not like a random house for him to come to and it's like two o'clock p.m my parents are going to be home for another two hours at least i didn't know what to do and this little kid was just he didn't look panicked or anything he was just staring up at me and so i said okay and i closed the door and i locked it really quickly i didn't want to be rude but i locked it really quickly because something did not seem Right. I went to the kitchen and I got a bottle of water and when I was coming back the doorknob was like jiggling like someone was trying to get in and I just like kind of froze and I was like oh my god like what do I do now because he's very clearly trying to get into the house and it starts jiggling harder and like I can tell that he's like kind of putting some force on the door trying to open it and I thought to myself how can I get him to leave without like putting myself in danger because where I was the cops would have taken a long long time to get to I mean I lived in the middle of nowhere you guys um it was bad and at the time I mean I had a cell phone I had the house phone and everything but it's weird how like all of the things that you've been taught <laughs> kind of vanish once you are in a situation that's truly really dangerous 
So what I did was we had a back garage door and our garage was always open. We had dogs outside by the way and for some reason they weren't barking. Usually they bark at everything. But my childhood like dogs weren't barking. I don't know if he like gave them treats to shut them up or what. So I decided what I would do was I would run out through the garage, put the bottle of water on his car, and I would just come back in. So I open the garage door, and when I do, there is a huge, huge, creepy looking, burly, muscular man in my garage, kind of like inspecting everything. Like literally looking around the garage, and I didn't know if it was like for things to steal or what, but he was just there like looking at everything. And I kind of just stared at him like really surprised, and I said, oh, excuse me, and I closed the door and locked it. And I was like, what do I do now? Because this guy wants me to bring him a bottle of water. And now he's like banging on the door, like, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Can I get a bottle of water, please? Can you give me a bottle of water? My car won't start. My little boy is really hot. Could you bring us a bottle of water? Like over and over and over and over again. And so I shouldn't have done this. It was really dangerous, but I went back to the door, I opened it, and I gave him the bottle of water really quickly, and I said, here you go. And as I closed the door, he puts his foot in the door so it doesn't close. And he's like, could you come outside with us and maybe assist me for a minute? Because I'm not really sure if this is going to be enough. I might need you to get more. And I said, well, if that's the case, there's a hose outside. Feel free to use it. And he said, are you sure you can't come outside and help me? Like, are you sure you can't come outside and help me? Like, all of this kind of stuff. And the little boy at this point kind of started looking a little bit freaked out, like a little bit weird. And so I said, no and I closed the door and I locked it. And he walked away from the door, but all I could think about was like that man inspecting the garage door. So I ran down to the basement and I locked the door and I hid down there and I called my parents who then called the cops. My parents got there and the cops actually just never showed up and uh, the guy had been long gone. I never even saw the car, so I have no idea what kind it was, like anything like that but he was long, long, long gone. And that was the last time I ever saw him. And my parents had said, you know, he has a little boy with him. We're not sure like what the situation there is, but we never saw him again. There was a time a few months later where we came home to find the door to our house wide open and things had been moved and looked at, but nothing was taken. It's like papers had been shuffled through, like um, there was food missing from the fridge, like weird things like that. But thank God nothing was like taken and thank God nothing worse ever came of that. That guy was really creepy and unfortunately I think living in the middle of nowhere and being the only house around for a pretty long time had its definite downfalls. So that's sort of the story there um, and it's not very conclusive and I wish it was but just the way he was talking makes me genuinely think he was going to try to kidnap me or something and the fact that he had some guy scoping out our garage or whatever with him that he never even mentioned like something really sketchy was going on there either they were going to try to like kidnap me or do something or they were going to try to break into the house and like steal stuff so to this day, I don't know which one that was. I'm sure it was one of those two, and I don't want to know which one it was. I don't like to think about this story very often, because it could have been so much worse than it was. But that is the story, and I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you've not already, make sure to head on over to my friend Andrew's channel and check out his video over there. You guys will love him. He does a lot of story time videos. He's kind of like the boy version of me, except more vulgar. <laughs> but I love him so much, and I know that you guys will. But anyways, I love you all. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, I will see you soon. Bye.